Hello everyone, I'm Lisa Weber Curry, Manager of Clinical Services at Ascension Counseling Center. You're watching Ascension Counseling Center's video newsletter, where we talk about the services we offer and how you can benefit from them. Thanks for joining us. In this episode, we'll talk about cultivating happiness. Suzanne Hamilton, Director of Ascension Counseling Center is here with five tips to get more satisfaction and joy out of life. Please stay with us for the next half hour or so. Our newsletter begins right after this message. Ascension Parish, a parish steeped in tradition. It's a place where generations of families have continued to enjoy a lifestyle that centers on community living and community celebration. It's a place where we care about each other and we care about ourselves. For more than 50 years, the Ascension Counseling Center has continued the tradition of helping individuals and families change behaviors and change lives. The Ascension Counseling Center. Welcome back and thanks for staying with us. Hello, Suzanne. Welcome again. Thank you, Lisa. Okay. So today we're going to talk about cultivating happiness. It's a little bit different from the approach we usually take. Normally mm -hmm. we talk about how not to be depressed right. or how not to be anxious or how not to be in a bad relationship. Mm -hmm. Today we're going to give the flip side and say how to be happy, more satisfied, uh, mm -hmm. more fulfilled in your life. I think that's great. I remember being at a con LCA conference and a presenter said, if you want people to really remember something, don't tell them not to or not be depressed or not be sad. Tell them how to and to and always put it in terms of this is what you need to do to be happy or remember to do this. So I think this is going to be really interesting. It will be. And hopefully it will be and, and that it'll be helpful for everyone out there. Right. So we want to talk about a uh, few little things about, um, you know, some some myths or some misconceptions that people have about happiness. Okay. And so people sometimes think that if they have more of something, they'll be happy. If they had more money, they'd be happy. Mm -hmm. If they had more friends, they'd be happy. If they had a boyfriend, a girlfriend, or a wife, or a husband, they'd be happy. And okay. so they're always looking at something, if I could just achieve this or get this, then I would be happy. Right. And really, that's not the case, okay. you know. Okay. Um, and so we want to talk about that a little bit. And, you know, one of the myths or misconceptions that people have is that money will make me happy. Oh, yes. We've heard that time and time again. And, and I, I do want to acknowledge that it is true that you need to have enough money to be able to meet your basic needs, right. food and shelter and those types of things. I mean, yeah. that is very necessary. But once we meet our basic needs, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's not about how much more money you can get. Right. And in fact, it's, it's been shown that people who win the lottery are mm -hmm. not any happier than they were before that. And so yeah. it's, it's about, you know, once l not looking at, you know, the money to make you comfortable, because it's mm -hmm. really not going to do that. It may do that in the short term, right. but in the long term, people are not found to be any more happy the yeah. more money that they have. Yeah, it starts to fade away over time, which is why you see so many TV shows actually interviewing past winners of lottery tickets um, and making get millions that way but currently are not happy in their lives. That's right. Yeah. So that, that money long term did not make a big difference right. for them in their emotional well-being. Okay. Very interesting point. An another myth or misconception that people have is that you need to be in a relationship to be happy. Mm -hmm. And I, I've known people that they were single and they didn't have a, a partner and that's mm -hmm. all they talked about and all they thought yes. about was when am I going to meet somebody and they didn't even want to go out where other couples were going to be because they were just so miserable it just mm -hmm. brought home how they weren't in a relationship. Yeah. And so while it is true that, that if you're in a good relationship you mm -hmm. can be happier, it doesn't guarantee that you will be. And mm -hmm. so it has more to do with how you are as an individual than how Somebody you are in a relationship with yeah. someone else. Yes. Right. Because ultimately we're responsible for our own happiness. So we can't rely on somebody else to make us happy. You know, sometimes I hear people say, 
once I'm with someone, I'm married, then my life is going to be complete. He or she will complete me. But that's also an unreasonable expectation and a myth as well. Yeah, and your partner is not responsible for living their life in such a way that they always make you happy. Exactly. It just it can't be done. <laughs> it can't because he would be miserable. That's you may right. be happy, but he's miserable. Yeah, yeah. and, and that, that same is true. You know, you're not responsible for living your life that's in such right. a way that you always make your partner happy. Mm -hmm. And yeah. uh, so, you know, it really can't be done. And, and if you have the idea that your partner is going to make you happy, then you're going to be very disappointed exactly. and frustrated. And then that's going to lead to anger long term. Mm -hmm. And more problems in a relationship. But it's important to note that this isn't just about a romantic relationship. It's relationships we have with anybody. Yes. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, another myth or misconception that people have is that Happiness declines with age. In other words, mm -hmm. the older you get, the less happy you yeah. are. And that's not really true. It's been shown that the older people get, the happier they are. Okay. And, you know, we've basically have uh, learned a lot through life, mm -hmm. uh, come to terms with where our life is and where right. our relationships are. Uh, it's been shown that, you know, even in marriages, the once you get further along in your life, mm -hmm. you've been married for a very long time, that's when people are more happy in their relationship. Yeah. So we actually have a tendency to get happier the older we get yeah. instead of the other way around. And that makes sense because the older we get, the more self-assured we are, the less likely we're looking for a self we're looking for acceptance or approval in other people. We're living our lives the older we get. Yeah, and that's yeah. going to make us a lot happier yes. than if we are relying on other people or, right. you know. And then another myth that we have is that some people are just happy. Mm -hmm. And not everybody is. And I'm just not a happy person. You know, that's just not my personality. Mm -hmm. And there is a little bit of truth to that, but mm -hmm. they estimate that maybe 50% of it is personality and temperament and genetics and mm -hmm. how you are raised. The rest of it is what you do with it and, and how you mm -hmm. live your life and the kind of thoughts that you tell yourself. Right. And it's what you do with your life. So a lot of it, 50%, has to do with how, what you make of it. And yeah. so that's what we're going to talk about the rest of this program is how do you make the most out of your situation and your life so that you do experience happiness and mm -hmm. well-being right. and joy. Yeah, so you can understand that you have a choice. Happiness is a choice. When you wake up in the morning, regardless of what you're feeling, you can choose happiness. And, and some people find that difficult to do because they don't understand how to do it. And that's, that's absolutely right. That's just yeah. a great point. And so we're going to kind of switch into the tips about okay. how to have a happy right. life and so that people can make that choice like you're talking about when you mm -hmm. get up. And really one of the, the things that is to train your brain to be more positive. Okay. Now, we kind of have a tendency to look at negative or threatening things. Mm -hmm. And that's genetic. We yeah. were kind of created that way. It's kind of a survival instinct that we are aware of dangers mm -hmm. and threats in our environment and that protects us. Right. But what happens is that sometimes our brains kind of get stuck in that pattern and all mm -hmm. we're doing is thinking about the negative things that are going mm -hmm. on around us. And so we have to kind of retrain our brain to start looking at positive things mm -hmm. and, and focusing on positive things. And so that was going to make a difference in, in how uh, happy we are on a, on a daily basis. Right. Because it all being, you know, hypervigilant, watching everything, looking for the negative, served this purpose way back when. But now we're in a different world, a different environment, and to exist from day to day with some joy, we got to start looking for the happy things. We have to. You know, things we can appreciate. It really boosts your self-esteem when you're able to be happy and accept things. And, and appreciation is a great word. It's, um, you know, one of the things that we have to do is be thankful about what's going on in our life. Mm -hmm. And so one of the ways that we can be, uh, increase our happiness is to be actively grateful mm -hmm. and appreciative of what we have. Right. And, you know, some people make a list, you know, you might yeah. try thinking of three things every day that you appreciate yeah. and that you're thankful for. Mm -hmm. And, or it could be people, it could be your job, it could be your pets, it could be your family right. or your relationships or mm -hmm. your home or your, your food, right. anything like that. 
focusing specifically and saying, I'm thankful for this and grateful for this yeah. is going to change your outlook so that you are happier. Exactly. I mean, simple things when someone just just barely avoided hitting me, I stop and I'm grateful for that because it, it reminds you that good things do happen. So we have to look for the good things. Um, a lot of researchers have suggested that before we go to bed each night, having a gratitude journal, maybe writing down three things that day that we were actually grateful for. Because sometimes when we have a rough day, we don't think of anything that we should be yeah. grateful for. So, and yeah. writing it down is a great idea because we, we can forget. Mm -hmm. uh, and whereas one day we may come up with three or five things that we're grateful for, and in a week or two when we're having a bad time, we yes. can't think of anything that we're grateful for. Mm -hmm. With If you're writing it down, you can go back and open that up and look at it and yeah. remind yourself about what you were grateful for, exactly. you know, having to struggle to come up with it when you're really at a low yeah. point in your exactly. life. Exactly. And Good along idea. with that, you know, is expressing gratitude and appreciation mm -hmm. to other people. Right. And so we want to always make sure that uh, we are saying thank you, uh -huh. that we're telling people that we appreciate them or right. what we appreciate or that we appreciate mm -hmm. what they did for us. And so yeah. saying thank you, verbalizing it, is going to make the other person happier, mm -hmm. but it will also make us happier as well. It does, because just seeing the reflection in someone else's face when you've just said, thank you, I appreciate the good work you did, thanks for helping me out, thanks for even offering the help out. And you see that person smile because they're receiving that thanks from you, then it makes you smile inside too because you've yes. done something good for somebody else. Right. Yeah. And then, you know, counting your blessings, that's really close to gratitude. Mm -hmm. uh, but looking at things, people that uh, are that you love, having a roof over your head, um, making a, a regular habit. And, and mm -hmm. I like the idea of, of doing it when you go to bed at night. Yeah. Setting mm -hmm. a regular time and, and doing it every single day right. so that you're, you're mm -hmm. making it a part of your routine. Yeah. You're, you're essentially training your brain to know every day I'm looking for something to be grateful for. So when I sit down at night, I've got something to write down. So it's a great way to express gratitude. And it makes you become more <coughs> intentional about looking for the positive things. Yes. Because looking for the negative things, for whatever reason, is automatically done yeah. by our brains. Exactly. You know, we do that automatically. Everybody's brain. And yeah. uh, so we, we, we <coughs> look for the positive things. We need to sometimes just be intentional about that. It's just not going to automatically happen. You right. know, if you go hang out with your relatives, you just, and somebody's annoying, you know, that's you're what right. you're going to focus on right. more so than, than the positive yes. interactions that you have. Exactly. That's just human nature, yeah. you know, so that makes us become more aware of mm -hmm. the positive things that are going on in our lives. Right. Um, yeah. Also, another thing is, is l finding something positive in your negative past experiences. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times what we do is we think about something that was negative, that we said or did that was stupid mm -hmm. or that we regret, or something negative that somebody else did to us. Right. And we can just find ourselves thinking about that over and over and over, mm -hmm. just kind of running through our heads right. like a hamster on a wheel, yeah, you just know. Just ruminating the, yes. again and again. Yeah. And uh, so <coughs> it's one of the ways to turn those kind of, those kind of memories can torment us right. and, and, and rob our, our joy. One of the ways to get rid of that is to look at that situation and try to find some positive outcome mm -hmm. from it. What did you learn or what did somebody right. else learn or what happened that might have been a positive aspect of it? Mm -hmm. Even if 99% of it was negative, 1% might have been fine. Even if it was just you walked away. Right. And didn't allow them to continue to say something negative to exactly. you. Exactly. Or you said, you know, that hurts my feelings. Anything like that, even if they ignore that and they continue to be kind of verbally abusive, mm -hmm. focus on what you did that was right. positive. How did you take your power back from that situation by walking away from the situation? And I think all experiences come with a lesson for us. Mm -hmm. We just have to be open and looking for that lesson. And sometimes in a moment we can't find it. So I would encourage people to walk away from it for a while and then come back and think about it again because there's always something in there. There'll that be you, something. Yes, yes. definitely. Uh, another tip 
on how to have a more satisfying life or how to mm -hmm. be happier is to nurture and enjoy your relationships. Okay. And the relationships that we're in add to the quality of our life. And in yes. fact, one of the characteristics of someone who has depression is mm -hmm. the, the two things that they find most common are they have a negative thinking pattern mm -hmm. of how they think about everything that happens right. to them and they don't have positive relationships. Yeah. And so these are having positive nurturing relationships are one of the most important things in having a satisfying life and, mm -hmm. and having happiness. And yeah. so, you know, one of the things that we want to do is make sure that we make a conscious effort to stay connected. Right. And, you know, we're all really busy and we all have a lot of things that pull us in a lot of different directions and take mm -hmm. up a lot of our time. And we come, become kind of inward focused with yes. everything we have to do, even mm -hmm. if it's not problems, we just have our list. You know, how many times have you walked off from the grocery store checkout and forgotten to pick up your bags exactly. with you, you know, exactly. uh, because we're focused on the next thing right. that we have we're to do. Right, we're not present, yeah. So we have to make sure that we make it be intentional effort to stay connected to the mm -hmm. people in our lives so that we yes. are always, um, it, it, yeah, it's going to increase our happiness level. And I think we get so caught up in the digital age of, oh, well, I saw them on Facebook or I saw them on Instagram or Twitter. But I think it's so much better if you can just pick up a phone, hear a voice, or plan to meet and just chat and get to know each other better and spend time with each other because that interaction with somebody else sometimes makes you forget about all your troubles. Yes. You know, so I think it's really good. Okay. And then it's important to do like what you said and that get mm -hmm. together and chat and share your feelings and mm -hmm. share your day. It's, it's the quality of the time. You know, right. people talk about quantity time, how much time, and mm -hmm. then quality and what you do. And so if you're just both sitting and watching TV or both mm -hmm. playing video games or something like that where you're not really interacting, that's right. not really going to strengthen your relationships. So it really needs to be uh, that you have quality time with people that you're actually interacting with them right. and keeping up with their day and you know mm -hmm. making sure that you're sharing those things with each other, that right. you're not just there and not speaking or that you're there and doing opposite things exactly. you're not spending time together so being mm -hmm. intentional about nurturing those relationships and make sure that you're doing something interacting with each right. other are very important pieces okay and then <coughs> also you know they uh, have the saying you know that bad birds of a feather flock together right. okay well so it's very important that we associate with happy people yes. so people who are happy and who are upbeat and positive mm -hmm. those are the people that we want to seek out because we'll take that energy into us and it'll sort of become part mm -hmm. of us you know right. laughter when people laugh it makes you laugh when people yawn it makes you yawn exactly it's the same <laughs> way that you know whenever you have someone who's happy and mm -hmm. upbeat with you you're more likely to be that you know mm -hmm. if you're be around people who whine and complain you know then you're more likely to feel down so it's right. very important to to just identify those people who are happy and mm -hmm. whenever we're struggling that's who we call that's who we seek out that's because they right. have a real upbeat personality on life yeah. and personality that and it's will contagious it, it rubs it off contagious. and and by the same means if you're encountering people that are being constantly negative and they're down and they're sad it's well within your rights to walk away and go seek out those happy people because if you stay there long enough that negativity just jumps right on you it does it drains your energy so quickly yes um, okay. another piece of it is is being happy with the good fortune that other people have. Yes. Well, we don't think about this very often, mm -hmm. but you know, a lot of times when somebody else has something positive happen to them in their mm -hmm. life, on their job, in their career, anywhere else, you know, we, we, we may be jealous or mm -hmm. we may s again turn inward and say, well, why doesn't that ever happen to me? Yeah. You know, anything why isn't like it that. my turn? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. And so if we're not happy when something good happens to somebody else, mm -hmm. we really are uh, shortchanging ourselves and right. so we need to learn how to be happy and celebrate mm -hmm. when something positive happens to somebody else right. and we'll have if we're happy for them they got a raise and mm -hmm. we didn't instead of focusing on well I didn't get a raise where's mine mm -hmm. you know if we're happy for them 
that they got theirs at least, mm -hmm. then we'll have a much different experience than if we just spend the rest of the day complaining and whining and feeling right. bad that we didn't get ours. Mm -hmm. Right. It, I, and I mean, taking delight in others' good fortune to me opens the door for your good fortune to come. Yes. Um, because you're able to appreciate what someone else had. And one of the things I always remind myself of, and even when people talk to me about why did this person get the good break and I didn't get it, what is for you, nobody else can get it. That's yours. Be grateful for that person and rest assured your turn is coming if you remain grateful. Yes, absolutely. I think that's one of the big mm -hmm. keys. Very important. Mm -hmm. um, another tip that is to live in the moment and savor life's pleasures. So mm -hmm. there's living in the moment means we're not thinking a, a lot about the past and we're not thinking about the future. Mm -hmm. We're not worried or filled with regret or just wondering what's gonna happen. Right. And we're also not thinking, well, you know, right now it's blah, it's nothing. So my better times are gonna come in the future. Right. We really need to be focused right now in the here and now. This mm -hmm. and, and to recognize as, as we're putting all of these things into place, we begin to recognize that, you know, today is good, today is right. better. And so we, we're focusing on the, the right now. And we're also fo looking at as we're focusing on the right now, mm -hmm. we, we need to kind of savor the pleasures that we have. So it's, yes. it's looking at the very small things and enjoying every small thing. It's enjoying the, the meal mm -hmm. that you're having right. or enjoying the music that you're listening to mm -hmm. or enjoying the bed that you're making. Exactly. So it's being aware of exactly what's going on and appreciating that and savoring that. Yeah, because when we get caught up in the past or I oftentimes hear people say, well, when I get to this point, then I can be happy, I'll breathe, I'll relax because my happiness is there. I'm looking for this one big event to get to. Mm -hmm. And in doing that, we miss all the little smaller events that most of the times are more significant and important and will sustain your happiness rather than just that one big event. And yeah, we've all had the experience where we, we leave our house and we drive to work and we think, and did I stop at that stop sign? Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. You know, because we're not even paying attention to what we're doing. Exactly. And we can do that in our entire life so that we, every day just goes by and we're not even paying attention to the small joys mm -hmm. that can be found. Uh, if, if, we're, if we're not even paying attention when we're driving to work. Don't remember passing we that store. Don't remember <laughs> that. You know, we, and so we're not enjoying the weather. We're not noticing the blue sky. We're All not. Right enjoying our car you know some exactly. people like to you know i enjoy driving mm -hmm. so we're not getting all the small pleasures out of life that we could mm -hmm. that's the things that will sustain us so you also have some tips for us on how to live in the moment how to savor life's pleasures so meditation is one of them meditation is one of those um, meditation kind of makes us focus in the very moment that we're sitting in mm -hmm. and and people can meditate in a lot of different ways okay uh, some of them are just um, repetitive motion mm -hmm. can be you know anything that doesn't take us concentrating on like problem solving or anything right. like that any kind of complicated activities mm -hmm. but meditation could be uh, simply sitting and relaxing right. could be breathing in and out it could mm -hmm. be enjoying uh, drinking a cup of tea or coffee, right. anything like that could be a meditation. But it, uh, it also, a meditation can be repeating a word over and over. Mm -hmm. and like a mantra. Like a mantra. Mm -hmm. And so if we're meditating on a word, that needs to be a positive word. Right, so definitely. So it could be peace, joy, mm -hmm. you know, uh, yeah. hopefulness, anything like that. Mm -hmm. We just repeat that word and focus on that, that word. Right. And you know, meditation is something that that we in America don't think of very often. Mm -hmm. We, we kind of think of that as like an Eastern religion, yes. something like that. But even in the Bible, it's full of talking about meditating on examples the Word of God. Of it. Right. Yeah, and so there's a lot of examples of meditation mm -hmm. in there. It should be a part of our Christian faith, but sometimes right. it, it's not. We think of it right. as, as, as yeah. not. But uh, there are a lot of examples of just meditating on positive mm -hmm. statements and positive things right. uh, that that can uh, be helpful for us. Yeah, I think when people think of meditation, they think, I could not possibly sit still long enough to meditate. 
there's a bug flying by me. I just mm -hmm. thought about what I need to do the next day. But for meditation, you can actually start it a minute a day and increase it to two minutes, three minutes. And you give us examples of the different ways we can do meditation. You, you um, discuss body scan med meditation. So how does that work? Well, that involves sitting quietly and mm -hmm. kind of tuning into what your body is doing. Like okay. if we sit still, we'll, we'll notice, oh, I have a little bit of a headache mm -hmm. or I feel an ache and a pain. If when we're sitting and we're not moving around a lot and mm -hmm. going from point A to point B and mm -hmm. those types of things, we become more aware of what's going on in our bodies. Mm. And so it's, it, it, that's helpful in the sense that if we recognize that we, we do have uh, maybe a, a headache or something going on mm -hmm. within our body, we can do something about that. Uh, mm -hmm. Normally, we don't even stop to pay attention mm -hmm. to those kind of things. Once we start right. being aware, you, you're aware you have uh, like an itch and you, mm -hmm. you know, because the tag in the back right. of your shirt, exactly. all these little things that, that are going on within our bodies mm -hmm. that we're not paying attention to that, that if we did, could make a big difference in how we're feeling in the moment. Okay, good. Okay, so what about, you talk about, and this is interesting, walking meditation. Yes, and walking is, just like it says, finding a, a path to walk, mm -hmm. and just focusing on, so you could focus on some aspect of it, like your breathing, mm -hmm. or your footsteps, but mm -hmm. you can also focus on what's going on around you, mm -hmm. the ground underneath you, whether right. it's green and the grass is green and the sky is mm -hmm. blue, and so walking yeah. and meditating is, is a great idea. Yeah. It's, you're walking and you're fully present. You see all the beautiful flowers along the walkway, and walking in Louisiana is great because there's so many beautiful parks. Yes. And so that's the perfect way to meditate. You're walking and observing all the beauty in the park in the present moment. So when you're there in that present moment, the past can't enter in, the future can't. You're relaxed in that you're moment. You're relaxed and you're, you're preventing all of those other things that are distracting mm -hmm. from coming into your awareness. Right. And so you're just focusing on, on what you're doing. Um, you can do that mindfulness with eating, okay. you know, and, and um, so that we're not just shoveling it in, mm -hmm. but we're making sure that we taste it, we smell it, all of the different parts mm -hmm. of it that go into eating right. and enjoying our meals. Um, and, yeah. you know, it, and that's even good for us. They talk mm -hmm. about whenever we eat, um, you should slow down between right. bites and chew your food well and, you know, mm -hmm. uh, take There's your time. Something and, to mm -hmm. our mom saying. Yes. Chew it at least 32 times before yeah, you that's swallow. Right. So there's a purpose behind that. It was really meaningful. And I think about sometimes when we're eating together as a family, we all sit down, especially if it's a family recipe or somebody's recipe in the family, and we don't know what's in it. We sit down and savor it, and everyone tries to dissect what that person put into that recipe. So it keeps you in the present moment, and it keeps you thoroughly enjoying your food because you're going to chew slower because you're trying to figure out, I know, maybe it's paprika, maybe it's something else, but it keeps you in the present moment. Yes, and that's yeah. an excellent thing, and, and that's <clears throat> the other thing that does is it gets conversation going among the family, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. conversation that's focused on, again, mindfulness of what right. we're doing right now. Uh, mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's, that's yeah. a wonderful thing. And it connects you, mm -hmm. you have that connection with people, so yeah, it works for us. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you also talk about um, Notice and savor small pleasures. Even every little thing that you do that you enjoy mm -hmm. is something that you, we need to slow down and recognize. Right. So uh, all the small things that, that happen in your day on mm -hmm. a daily basis, if it's something that, that appeals to you or s caught your attention, mm -hmm. uh, uh, a wonderful scent, right. a nice aroma, when you notice it, stop and Pay yeah, attention. And I appreciate a, a it. A color that you love. Stop mm -hmm. and pay attention. So all of those mm -hmm. are, are small things that we can really enjoy in the moment. Even exactly. if it's just for 10 seconds. Exactly. It adds something pleasurable to your life it that does. can make you more happy. It, when you said that, I thought about Alice Walker. When she says, she's an author, you know that. When she says, how can anybody pass by the color purple and not notice it? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's virtually impossible. It's bright, it's bold, and it gives you pleasure just looking at it. 
So yeah, it's important to notice and savor the small pleasures. Yes. Yeah. So what is adopting enjoyable daily rituals all about? Well, it kind of involves making sure that there are things that we in, enjoy. Mm -hmm. Again, this is the intentional part of it, okay. where we want to make sure that we, we come up with some rituals that we enjoy, okay. or rituals that we're already doing um, in the morning, getting ready for work. Mm -hmm. You have your rituals. You do everything right. in exactly the same order. And if anybody and interrupts you, you're way and where off am task. I? Do I have to brush exactly. my teeth again? You know, those <laughs> kind of things. And so, right. Um, being able to find some, even a small ritual mm -hmm. that you become mindful and that you enjoy right. while you're doing it. Exactly. Because you know what? That ritual, that small, enjoyable rich, ritual breaks up the monotony of your day. Or if you've had a rough day, you can say, oh, but I know at lunch I bought this book I want to read and I've been so looking forward to it. So I know that I'm going to have some enjoyment then. It helps you to get through the rougher moments because mm -hmm. you know you got that little spot of joy coming along. And we have rituals when we get into work in the morning. Mm -hmm. You make your cup of coffee, right. and you, you know, or you stop and chat with mm -hmm. your coworkers, whatever it is. Right. You make that become a ritual so that you're doing it every mm -hmm. day, and it becomes something that you do look forward to. Right, and it keeps you on on task and on track you know that this is what i do oh got my morning sunshine from saying hello to everyone now i'm ready to get to work yeah yeah okay now this is something most of us are guilty of multitasking and yes. you say we need to minimize it yeah we need to minimize it in fact um you know, a doctor said, told me one time, you know, the older we get, the <laughs> di more difficult it is for us to multitask mm -hmm. and the more important it becomes that we focus on one thing at a mm -hmm. time. And um, when we're multitasking, again, it takes our focus away from what we're doing and we're, mm -hmm. we're spreading our attention over multiple things. Right. And, you know, I'm really guilty about that. I'm a, I'm a multitasking queen, you know, mm -hmm. um, but whenever we're doing that, we're not focusing intently or intentionally on any one thing, right. we're kind of our brain is kind of skimming over each one of those things and we mm -hmm. don't enjoy it to our fullest. And so focusing mm -hmm. on one thing at a time allows mm -hmm. us to be really aware of what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And if it's, you know, some of the things that we're doing, their work and they're not enjoyable, right. uh, but other things are. And so mm -hmm. we need to make sure that when we're doing those enjoyable things, we're not cluttering up the experience with other things. Right. And, and even sometimes the things we don't enjoy as well, if we're trying to do that as well as an enjoyable thing as well as something else, it just drags that, that thing that is not so enjoyable on forever and ever. Mm -hmm. Just focus our attention on it, get it done, and then we can move on to the more pleasurable moments. Yes. But, but we're all guilty of multitasking, and I know I, you don't ever feel like you fully accomplish something mm -hmm. when you're trying to do all those different things at one time. Okay, something we've been hearing since the beginning of time. Stop to smell the roses. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we don't always yeah. do it, but we've been hearing and, it. And, you know, it's good advice, even though you, we, we, we almost don't even hear it anymore. People right. might can say that, and it doesn't even... It doesn't resonate yeah, anymore. We, it just doesn't yeah. mean anything, but really, it is about stopping and enjoying the 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 sweetness in life right that's that's so important anything we see that that grabs our attention and brings that smile stay there for a few seconds you know if you have minutes stay in that spot for a minute and just take it all in mm -hmm. yeah it's important what about replaying happy memories well, those are very important to do uh when we're trying to increase our happiness mm -hmm. to just uh, again think about and this is almost as like a, a meditation, mm -hmm. meditating and pondering the happy memories and bringing those back to us. Uh, that is going to uh, fill our thoughts with happiness rather than mm -hmm. despair or unhappiness. You know, we've talked a little bit about that, mm -hmm. not looking back at the negative experiences and replaying those over and over and over, because as we do that, it's mm -hmm. just going to destroy our energy and, right. and take us down and mm -hmm. take us back to that place where that negative uh, yeah. happen. The only time you know we want to do that is, like we said before, picking out the positive that came from it mm -hmm. and then focus on that and then right. 
replacing the negative memories with happy ones. Exactly. And if that day is so rough that you just can't see any happiness in it, go back to those memories and pull them out That's and let right. it help yes. get you through the day. Okay. And so your next tip is focus on helping others and living with meaning. And it's very important that we focus on other people and not just on ourselves. And mm -hmm. so many people who are unhappy, we are just sitting and thinking about our own situation and how terrible it mm -hmm. is and how nothing's working out and what all of our problems are. And focusing on other people and doing things for other people yeah. takes us out of that. Yeah. You know, there are a lot of people that, you know, you might have an illness like cancer, mm -hmm. um, but somebody else has a worse situation, right. you know, exactly. and, and that we can help reach out and help them as well. Mm -hmm. So it's not just about us. It's about what we can do for other people. And that involves being a volunteer. There's so many opportunities to yes. volunteer at churches and in, in community and nonprofits mm -hmm. and other places like that. Even right. at the Balloon Festival, they needed exactly. a lot of volunteers. Right. Volunteering is a way to give back to other people without asking for anything for ourselves. And that's mm -hmm. going to increase our level of well-being and our happiness. It definitely does because so many times I hear people say who do volunteer, do help others. Um, yeah, the people I help they're feeling like I did something wonderful for them, but they just don't realize it gave me so much more. Mm -hmm. You know, just being able to help somebody and do things. Um, one day at lunch, I was in LeBlanc's, a uh, Rouse's store, and the lady behind me had a case of Coke, and she said, I can't get that on the counter. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to do. And so I just turned around, picked it up, and put it on the counter. And so as I was walking away, I said, bye, have a good day. She said, I already did. You just blessed me. Yeah. And so that she may have thought I'd done, I had done something for her, but that made the rest of my day that she felt blessed by something I did. So I, there's always a good feeling in doing and giving yeah, and to others. And that's, you know, what we call an act of kindness. Mm -hmm. You know, we do something kind for somebody else. It just gives us a warm feeling, a, a good sense of well-being whenever we can do something nice for exactly. someone. Uh, and, and it can be something very small like that. It doesn't have mm -hmm. to be a huge thing. It doesn't have, right. you don't have to spend money on it. It's just sometimes, you know, uh, just being thoughtful mm -hmm. of somebody else's needs and, and seeing if there's something you can do to help them meet that need. Yeah. And, and sometimes you hear people say, well, my life isn't together. I can't help anybody else. But oftentimes it's in helping somebody else that you figure out how to put your own life back together. And it doesn't have to be anything, you know, like psychological or like, right. you know, you don't have to have it all together exactly. to volunteer, you know, on, um, the Wednesday night services at our church, they, mm -hmm. they, they feed everybody. And there are volunteers there who, who prepare the food and who serve the food. And mm -hmm. you don't have to have anything together emotionally right. or mentally exactly. to do that. <laughs> exactly. you know, but that's something that's very much appreciated by everyone, that, that there's somebody willing to do that for mm -hmm. them. Exactly. You know, and they and know every Wednesday, I'm going to get a good meal. It so doesn't take a special that. skill to be able to right, do that, you know. Right, exactly. And so there's so many very simple things that you mm -hmm. can do for other people. And when you see that smile on their face when you mm -hmm. hand them a plate, it's, it, it's very rewarding. It is. It really is. And what usually happens is if you extend a hand of kindness to someone, that person will extend kindness to somebody else. Mm -hmm. So it's a cycle. You, you just keep passing that kindness around, you know. Yes. So I think that's a good thing. Um, you also talk about playing to your strengths. Well, and this is about knowing your uniqueness mm -hmm. and recognizing we all, again, we, we sort of, we look at the things that, that are weaknesses. We're very mm -hmm. much aware of that. Right. You know, we look in the mirror and all we focus on is the thing that about ourselves that mm -hmm. we don't like. Um, so this is about recognizing your strengths mm -hmm. and recognizing that you have them this could be another good place to journal. Right. You know, I am, and then fill in the blank mm -hmm. with all positive things, what your strengths are, what your abilities are, what you like about yourself. And then 
to be able to use those again we kind of mm -hmm. talked about volunteering this is a place that you know you can use to volunteer that play up to your strengths yeah um, good idea and or taking a class mm -hmm. or anything like teaching a class right you know that that plays up to your strengths and that's going to help you to feel a lot happier um, and, and if you see, want to volunteer but everything you look at doesn't match up so you think with your strengths then create another opportunity to volunteer mm -hmm. what is it you would like to give back and start that going because you're going to always find somebody else in the community that's interested in doing that as well so create a program to volunteer in there are, there are some high school student, students at Dutchtown High School that started a club mm -hmm. where that's designed to help empower women, mm -hmm. and that's their entire goal. Yeah. They've donated money to the Iris Domestic Violence Center Great. and done a lot of other things. And so there wasn't a club. One of the young women had an idea that that would be important, mm -hmm. so she started it. And they've done Great. some wonderful things over the years. Yeah. See, and you get more people involved. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's a win-win for everyone it when is. you're able to do that. And so you talk about going for the flow. Well, yeah, and that when I mean by that is whenever you have a flow, it means that, that you're just engaging in life and engaging in the positive things and engaging in the, the positive stream of mm -hmm. your life. So it's not going with the flow, but being in the flow. Okay. So you're not fighting against you know what your life is and what your opportunities are right. but you're just immersed in them and so you know we, we learn not to limit ourselves and be negative about ourselves mm -hmm. but we engage fully in any opportunity that comes along in our life whether it's yeah. you know um, at, at work at church in mm -hmm. the community with classes anything like that we just really engage in life instead right. of being isolated from it. If right. we have a choice to stay home or go somewhere, we go out and, and we enjoy. And fully yes, participate fully when engaging. you're out. Don't fight against it because oftentimes when we're fighting against something we don't want to experience, it comes at us harder. Yes. Because the goal is there's a lesson or two or three in there for us to learn. So the goal is to walk through that. Yes, so that we yeah. can learn from whatever our lesson is, because exactly. it will definitely come back to us. Yes. <laughs> if we don't learn it now, we're going to have to learn yes. it later, it because comes we're back. due. Exactly. Part. Yeah. So your final tip concerns taking better care of our health. Yeah, and it just means that we need to be the best that we can be. Mm -hmm. So we need to be exercising, we need to have proper nutrition, we need to do all of those things, preventive mm -hmm. uh, tests. All of the things that, that our doctors and, and uh, all the websites are recommending for us, uh -huh. you know, preventive measures and um, so, you know, walking and exercising and mm -hmm. all of those things are going to make us healthier by, yeah. by preventing diseases. You know, a lot of diseases that we have now can be prevented. Right. Um, adult onset diabetes can be prevented yes. in large, large measure. Right. And so it's very important that we take care of ourselves. Um, mm -hmm. And that means, ladies, get a manicure, get right. your hair done, you know, do things that are going to make you feel better mm -hmm. and make you look better and make you, Definitely. you know, just taking care of yourself both it's internally and externally. It's so important. And, and for the gentlemen, we also invite them for that manicure and That's pedicure. Right. It's a time to relax and you feel so much better. Yeah, and preventative medicine is key nowadays. Because as you said, a lot of illnesses can be prevented. But those that can't, educate yourself about those. Know the best treatment options. Know what role you can play in improving your health. It definitely will make you a lot happier person. There are so many health fairs, community health fairs in Ascension Parish. There really and are, and watch, that's a great yes, thing. Absolutely. St. Elizabeth Hospital, Mary yes. Bird Perkins. Uh, just mm. a, a, a lot of partnerships yes. to bring on mm -hmm. great community knowledge and get the community involved. Yeah, there's a lot of that in Ascension Parish, so yeah. that's a great thing. And finally, you talk about getting enough sleep, which is something a lot of us are guilty of not doing. We really do need to make sure that we get enough sleep. It's going to make us, if we don't, you know, when we're asleep, our body is repairing itself mm -hmm. and taking care of itself. Mm -hmm. And so we're not giving our body the chance to repair itself and take care of us 
care of itself. Right. But we're also going to be tired, lethargic, um, mm -hmm. you grouchy know, sometimes. Absolutely. Yeah. If I don't get any sleep, you mm -hmm. know, I'm going to be grouchy and I'm yeah. bad in the mornings anyway. <laughs> so, you know, it's really important that we make sure that we're getting enough sleep and the right yeah. kind of sleep. And if your sleep is always um, interrupted, yeah. a lot of people have sleep apnea or other mm -hmm. things like that, that their sleep is disrupted, yeah. then they're going to actually, we're going to be ill. So yeah. sleep is a very important part of taking care of ourselves. Yeah, and so is. you need to look at, you know, what do you need to do to improve your sleep? If you're having trouble falling asleep, then mm -hmm. it's important to make sure that your environment is conducive to sleep. So yeah. do you need it to be totally dark? Do you need a small light on? Mm -hmm. uh, don't Take, be exercising. Put technology away. Yes, put pe yes. technology away. Mm -hmm. If you watch TV before bedtime, watch something calming. Don't yeah. watch a drama or exactly. something active. That gets you all excited mm -hmm. yes. and in, in a stage of ready to take action instead of relaxing. And also monitoring your caffeine intake at, at yes. night, you know, and what you eat. Certain foods will also will keep, keep you awake. awake. Yes. So it's, it's paying attention to those things. And I think you made a really important point in stating sleep is necessary. That is the time our body really does restore itself. Mm -hmm. And if we're not giving our bodies enough hours to restore itself, we know the outcome the next day. It's really hard to function throughout a day if you haven't had the proper amount of yes, sleep. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, Suzanne, thanks again. This, this topic is very interesting. And now we know how to cultivate happiness. Yes. And so we encourage everybody to, to take these tips to heart as much as possible mm -hmm. and make the changes in your life. You're able to do this. Mm -hmm. uh, you're able to take control of your emotional well-being mm -hmm. and, and make the changes that are going to help you to be healthier and happier. And we encourage you to do that. Right. Happiness is a choice. It's a choice. Okay. Thank you, Suzanne. And thanks to you, our viewers, for spending your time with us for this episode of Ascension Counseling Center's video newsletter. Remember, you can catch replays of the program exclusively on Ascension 21 on the days and times listed on your screen and anytime on Ascension 21's YouTube channel. We hope today's information will help change your life for the better. That's our goal at Ascension Counseling Center for our programs to help change lives. Remember, Ascension Counseling Center is here by way of your support. We're funded by two mill property tax millage, which means that $2 from every $1,000 you pay in taxes goes to support our agency so we can provide free and low cost mental health and substance abuse outpatient services to residents of Ascension. We're located in Gonzales at 1112 Southeast Ascension Complex Boulevard, off Worthy Road, across from the courthouse and next to the health unit. You can reach us by calling 225-450-1016. You can also find us on the web at ascensionparish.net forward slash mh and on Facebook at Ascension Counseling Center. You can also hear us on KKAY AM 1590 every Tuesday from 10 to 1030 AM. Thanks for your support. And until next time, from everyone at Ascension Counseling Center, thank you for watching.